Last week, Luxor was the scene of a spectacular ceremony, recreating elements of the sacred Opet festival, a celebration of the god Amun. Among the amazing performances and impressive parade were four sacred barks carried, as they would have been in ancient days, down the sacred avenue of sphinxes, from the Karnak temple to the Luxor temple. These barks depict the so-called Theban triad, Amun, the supreme deity of the New Kingdom, his consort Moot, the primordial deity of motherhood, and their child Honsu, a lunar deity, among whose responsibilities was marking the passage of time and guiding those who travel by night. Here at Medinet Habu, the funerary temple of Ramesses III, you can see the Theban triad, and Honsu here is depicted as a mummified man. Alternatively, he can be depicted as a falcon, with the moon as a diadem, the same way that Ra wears the sun as a diadem. And it's as a falcon that he was depicted at this most recent Opet parade. Those paying close attention will notice that at the beginning of the video, I said that four sacred barks were carried. That's because the fourth is dedicated not to an ancient Egyptian deity, but to a 13th century CE Islamic sheikh, known today as Abu el Hajjaj or al Hajjaj, depending on your dialect of Arabic. He's celebrated in Luxor because Luxor was where he settled when he moved to Egypt, but these days he's mostly known for the mosque named after him. He didn't build the mosque, but he worshipped here, and he did take action in his lifetime to prevent its demolition. The mosque is built upon the foundations of the Luxor Temple Complex. In fact, it's built on the old site of a church. Because of this continuation of places of worship on the same site, and the fact that the Mosque of Abu el Hagag is still in use today, this makes the Luxor Temple the oldest site in the world to still see everyday use by people who aren't archaeologists, historians, or tourists, and is a contender, though we'll never know for sure, for the longest continually used site in the world. The temple at Luxor is an interesting one. Usually, a temple in ancient Egypt was devoted to a god, or a deceased king, who of course had become a god upon his arrival in the afterlife. The Luxor temple was a bit more abstract than this, because it was a place for honouring not any one being, but the very concept of kingship itself. More specifically, it was a temple established to pay homage to the continuation of the line of pharaohs, and the renewal of Egypt's kingship with each new generation of king. It's thought to be the actual site where New Kingdom pharaohs were crowned, to the extent where Alexander the Great claimed to have been crowned there, even though he almost certainly never went as far south as Luxor. The temple has always been at the heart of its local community, and this time I mean in a physical sense. The temple has hosted, in addition to the famous mosque, housing for the people of Luxor. When the Nile flooded, which it did well into the 20th century until the construction of the Aswan High Dam, the temple would serve as a place of refuge for those whose homes were threatened by floodwaters. Most of the temple, in fact, was submerged under layers of residential detritus, including older buildings within the temple site. Just like with the Avenue of Sphinxes, in the 19th century, people were turfed out of their homes in the temple site and had to be compensated as the excavation efforts displaced them. Like most of the larger ancient Egyptian sites, the Luxor Temple was built across centuries, with parts added by new kings over time. Construction probably began either later in the reign of Hatshepsut or in the reign of Thutmose III, her stepson, but was most greatly expanded during the reign of Amenhotep III, and then of course by pharaohs throughout the 18th and 19th dynasties. The Romans turned the site into a legion fortress, and it was the Romans who converted an ancient chapel to the mother goddess Mut into first an imperial cult temple for worshipping the Roman emperors, and then into the Christian church I mentioned earlier. There's another notable thing about the Luxor Temple that passes a lot of us by. It's built parallel to the river. Temples in Egypt tended to be built with their fronts towards the river, including, for example, the Karnak Temple three kilometres up the road. Luxor's temple is parallel to the river, with the entrance to the northeastern end. I'm not going to say anything definitive about the exact symbolism behind this architectural gesture, but since the temple was devoted to rejuvenation and continuity, something the Nile symbolised in both its annual flood and the fact that it flows eternally from a mysterious source, that's probably a factor. I also imagine that the entrance is on the northern end so that the festival space and most sacred chapels are to the south. The south was a sacred direction because, of course, the Nile, the source of life itself, flowed from some mysterious place in the south. 
Like the Dendera complex I covered a few weeks back, I think this is a wonderful example of how a site can remain holy to several generations of locals, even as their culture, religion and practices change over the course of millennia. Including a bark devoted to Abu el Hagag in a recreation of the ancient Opet festival is a pretty strong statement about how modern Egyptian culture is a continuation not only of medieval Egypt, but also the culture of the ancients. Whether you think that continuation is a fact or a construct, I'll leave up to you. It's certainly not a question I'm equipped to answer. Thanks for watching. If you missed the celebration in Luxor last week, my video about the Avenue of Sphinxes has a link in the description to the English version of those celebrations. The same channel has commentary in Arabic and French as well, and it's well worth a look. An absolutely spectacular ceremony. I'm absolutely delighted to say I hit 500 subscribers last week and I'm already getting past that and I'm still hoping to get as close as possible to a thousand by the end of January when I have a very special video coming out and it's also my channel's anniversary so if you're not subscribed consider doing so. If you are subscribed consider staying so. The ancient pillars I build my homes and mosques around are my backers at patreon.com slash armchair Egypt. I just released my first ever patron only video which was a lot of fun to put together. Expect more of that kind of thing and other goodies besides if you join my patron community. Until next time, my fellow armchair Egyptologists, life, prosperity and health to you all. Thanks for watching. Head over to my channel for more or click here to see what the YouTube demons think you should watch next. I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you'd like to support and collaborate on the channel with me, go to patreon.com slash armchair Egypt. You can also join my Discord community, there's an invite link in the description.